Ice cream lovers, one of the most common uh, problems in making shakes is if you've got hard scoop ice cream, people love the consistency of a hard scoop ice cream shake. It's got that little fleck feel to it. Uh, but the ice cream is so hard, how do you, uh, how do you come, how, how do you do it? Well, we're gonna tell you how to do it. I do wanna thank our episode sponsor, which is Green Mountain Flavors. Stan Sitton, you know, he's a humble man, but he's got a lot of knowledge about the ice cream business, particularly with flavors. All natural flavors, all natural colors, they're all extracts, they're all easy to use. Uh, talk to Stan, Laura's up there as well. She's wonderful. Uh, Stan's your man. Uh, GreenMountainFlavors.com, the link is down here. When you talk to Stan, tell him that I sent you. Okay, let's talk shakes. Everybody loves shakes. We've got freak shakes, we've got thick shakes, we've got thin shakes, we've got medium shakes. Everybody loves the shakes. Even Elvis loved the shakes. Being a bit silly. Now, there's a couple of different ways to make a shake. Your premium ice cream product, everybody loves the premium ice cream product because again, it's got that mouthfeel of a hand spun shake. You can use soft serve and you can still call it a hand spun shake because you're actually still hand spinning it. But it doesn't have that fleck, it's much more smooth. You can also go with a shake machine. Um, companies like uh, Culver's, um, McDonald's, a whole lot of places who do a whole bunch of shakes use shake machines. They're very, very efficient. Uh, much more of a smooth mouthfeel than again this premium shake. So if you're going to uh, want to do shakes with premium ice cream, how do you do it? Well, it all comes down to the temperature of your scoop. Your dipping cabinet should be sitting in the premium ice cream world somewhere around zero degrees. This is Fahrenheit. This is Celsius. Madeline's going to put Celsius in here. Bing! Uh, okay, so zero degrees. So you've got ice cream sitting in here in your dipping cabinet at zero degrees. You scoop it out. That product temperature, again, cabinet temperature and product temperature is a little bit different. Your product temperature in this product is probably about 10 degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Uh, so that's really firm and you want it firm because it lasts longer in the case. Uh, if someone's eating an ice cream out in the sun, you want it to last a little bit longer as well. So that's kind of a good suggestion. But it's really hard to put a scoop of that ice cream that cold in a shake machine <coughs> uh, or a, a stick blender, immersion blender and not have it kind of bounce around and throw milk everywhere. What you need to do is temper that ice cream up a little bit. And those that have a big shake program, for those who are really doing a lot of shakes, I spoke to one of our Scoop School graduates just this morning who basically sells their ice cream to a restaurant. All they do is make shakes out of it. Um, this cabinet, if they're just set making shakes, probably should be set at about plus five degrees Fahrenheit or bing, degrees Celsius. So that way the ice cream's a little bit more pliable. You're going through it a little bit quicker as well. Uh, but the question was, well, what if you, what, what do I need to do in order to have this temper up? This will temper up overnight. So if you're taking one of your buckets here that might be sitting at 10 degrees, and at the end of the shift, and this is what I recommend you do, at the end of the shift, on one of your uh, closing duty checklists should be checking the inventory of, let's call it the shake cabinet. And you might only, might only be doing vanilla. This one particular customer was just selling vanilla to this other restaurant. You might do vanilla and chocolate. But you've got to check the inventory here to make sure that you've got enough in there that is tempered for the next day. Because if you're taking product out of here and trying to make a shake with it, it's very cold. It's even worse if it's coming out of your storage freezer, which might be at minus 20. Um, so check the inventory of the shake cabinet before you close for the night. If you put something, uh, a bucket in 
here that was in storage at minus 20, it will be tempered up um, by the morning very easily. It's really about project or product management and logistics. Making sure that you've got enough shake uh, product in your shake cabinet the next day because again you're going to be in the same quandary if you're not rotating product either from storage or into your shake cabinet here. It's relatively rudimentary. I'll tell you that your employees will thank you for a softer ice cream makes a great shake and it'll do it in half of the time. You'll get more speed of service, you'll get more out of your employees, they'll be happier um, and it's a great way to boost your shake program to be able to continue to provide quick shakes, hand spun, a little bit of mouth feel. It's awesome. I hope that helps. We get a lot of questions about it actually. Um, look, I think it will. You just got to do the work. Thank you again to our episode sponsor, Green Mountain Flavors. The link is down below. And if you have a question, quandary, concern, problem, as they say in the Cook Islands, a mana manata. If you have a mana manata about the ice cream business, uh, leave a comment down below. And while you're look, while you're down below here, you might as well. Well, over here you can click subscribe. And if you want some more information on Scoop School, it's right here. Keep on scooping. See you on the inside.